Okay, so what I'll do right now is talk a bit about uh, thermal mass. So thermal mass is uh, it's the property of materials to hold heat. Uh, we call that specific heat. So I'll pop up a table there to show you uh, what the different types of materials and what uh, how much heat they can hold. So for example, honey is 2.9 Okay, what was it? Joules, kilojoules per kilogram uh, Celsius. So what that means is, let's just say a uh, kilogram of, so 2.2 pounds of honey. If uh, it's, say, it was at a temperature of about 20 degrees Celsius and it dropped by 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, so if you do the math, you go 2.9 kg, so kj, I guess, kilojoules. Uh, converting that to watts, so you divide by 3,600, which is 60 seconds times 60 minutes to put it into hours. So that'll convert uh, joules to kilojoules to uh, watts. So if you do the math, uh, 1 kg dropping by 10 degrees celsius will release about eight watts of energy in that hour uh, for example if it was a frame a deep frame of honey which weighs about 15 pounds if that dropped by 10 degrees celsius it release i think it's around 54 watts so which is quite a bit uh, so you can see how that is what helps uh fluctuate not fluctuate but uh dampen down uh large temperature uh fluctuations so honey is your friend uh so just so you know uh if you don't have uh enough honey in your colonies and you have a lot of empty frames and you think uh, sugar candy will help you uh candy boards don't hold heat uh because they just don't so you need honey on either side of your cluster and even better you need uh, pretty much a box full of honey and that way there your bees have food and then they have a nice thermal buffer honey is also a decent insulator uh, not as good as uh, polystyrene but it's similar to wood so imagine you have a fat honey frame say it's about an inch and a half two inch thick so that'd be about equivalent to two inches of wood, uh, which is probably three to f three to four R. So with the bees around that, up and above and on the inside, so basically it gives them a nice uh, uh, place to store extra heat, uh, so they can hold the heat into that honey. So it helps them buffer uh, crazy temperature differences, and gives them food access. So honey is good. And then so this is where you can see that in the spring, especially for those that don't insulate and your bees consume a lot of honey, uh, their honey stores will be really low. Uh, and now they're starting to brood rear. So they're starting to brood rear. They're increasing the nest temperature. A lot of that heat uh, just flows out if you've got a top vent. Uh, there's no honey to absorb the, uh, the extra heat. So basically the bees are doing a lot of work just to maintain temperature. Uh, so they're consuming even more honey that they don't really have. So hence honey is critical. Uh, early in the winter, less critical uh, because they've got lots of insulation. But towards the end of the winter, in spring, that honey or the lack of is one of those critical uh, success factors. So hence, uh, in the late winter consider closing off some of your top vents just so the bees can keep some of that extra heat inside especially if you're in a wooden colony so it would really really help so there's two terms uh, like i said specific heat is the number that tells you how much heat that material can hold and then thermal conductivity is pretty much how much heat slash coal that material will conduct so a very small number is good it means that it doesn't conduct heat very well so it's a good insulator 
Uh, so for example, like I was mentioning that plastic stuff, uh, the yellow plastic, uh, that's a, it's got, uh, a fairly high heat conductivity. So it does conduct heat much more than say the darker green polystyrene. So, uh, hence the reason I like plugging those seams up, uh, cause basically it's a heat suck. So if you look at your house and if you got your studs, your two by fours or two by six framing, uh, and if you had a thermal camera and it's damn cold outside, you could actually see those studs and in those corners, it would actually, because it's pulling out heat so quick, it's actually, it seems like it's pulling cold inside. It gives you a cold surface on the inside and that's typically where you'll get mold in your house is where you got thermal bridges. And it's the same thing with these colonies. So you've got thermal bridges, uh, that's where you'll get your condensation. Uh, so if you do notice my broodminders, I clip off the pieces of plastic because I don't want this to, to stick out because it does uh, suck in micro air around where that plastic uh, tap goes out. So I've just trimmed them all. So all I want is the sensor. I don't need that plastic tab because uh, it just takes too much space and it's actually a heat suck and it actually puts in, uh, it creates uh, micro leaks. So... I don't want that. So anyways, uh, hopefully this helps. So you can see what I did with my entrances. I made them bigger and I was getting hoarfrost and ice build up around those entrances uh, because of that hard plastic. Uh, like I said, in the last week, our high has been about, like I said, minus 15, average about minus 25 and our low in the mid uh, minus 30s. So you can see that uh, all five colonies after I, I cleaned out those entrances, they started buzzing and making lots of noise, uh, which is not something I like doing. Uh, but uh, sometimes you need to do it. And like I showed you in the other yard, the Lysen entrance guards have little vents. Uh, so I'm less worried about that. If the middle gets plugged, they still have access to air. So the ones that don't have that are the ones that worry me uh, if they get over plugged up. So uh, for the high IQs, the whole bottom entrance now is open on both of them uh, just to make sure they get enough air. So hopefully that helps. It's not too confusing again. Uh, so it's about 5 p.m. Uh, we're getting, I guess the solstice is here today. So short as day. Uh, and I guess my next video, I'll probably do it on winter bees and... Uh, pollen patties and all that type of stuff because I uh, just listened to a beekeeping podcast uh, it was a two bees in a podcast uh, from the University of Florida and uh, decent information on winter bees but uh, we know a lot more than what uh, the scientists uh, proclaims that we know uh, so and uh, what a lot of Americans forget is there's a whole country north of you that keeps bees and uh, we seem to do fine. So, uh, yeah, you're not alone. Uh, we need to share more information. Cheers.